Welcome back to our final segment here with Chef Marvin Woods, celebrity chef Marvin Woods. And Chef, you're going to be opening, or you're, you're considering opening a restaurant. We talked a little bit about that. Right. So in just a few minutes, I want, I want you to talk some more. Okay. But I want to focus on uh, the decisions you made to put yourself out there in a way that no one else has as far as sure. personally branding yourself. Um, what are some of those, or what advice can you give those that may be watching that who might want to emulate some of the decisions? I know it's not as easy as it looks because you've had a long career in the kitchen. Right. But talk a little bit about some of the choices you've made sure. in the books you've, you've created in the shows and those kind of things. Well, um, the first way I would answer that question, I would say it's a little bit of a follow-up to what I was talking about, staying true to the game, but in a different aspect. And that aspect is, first and foremost, you got to love what you do. And my, my other role is you got to have fun at fun with it. So one of the things that has happened with me in my career, me being true to the game, is I've, I've allowed myself to be exposed to different situations. And, you know, if it sends up a big happy flag, if you will, then I'm like, okay, I want to get into that some more. And that's how my first cookbook came out. Um, I had had eight or nine years in the business. And I had worked in Europe and New York and in Atlantic City at that point, but most of the stuff that I had done up until that point was all European driven. And so I, specifically it's cream and butter and, and all that type of stuff. And then I worked at a restaurant that featured Southwestern cuisine. It was a three-star rated restaurant. So we would use lobster and foie gras and all the things that you would, we would use in any other gourmet restaurant. But when it came to seasoning, it was rubs, it was um, herb marinades and chutneys and relishes. And it just, it was an epiphany for me because I'd never seen gourmet food executed in that manner. So a year and a half later, I, did, I, was, I, I took a job uh, in a restaurant that was featuring low country cuisine. I had no idea what low country was. Got in there and just fell in love with it. And what came out of that was my first cookbook because I had learned so much about Low Country and I was like, man, I didn't learn any of this in culinary school. Um, you know, Charleston, South Carolina, that area produced rice for a hundred years. I had no clue that we produced rice in this country back in the mid 1700s. Had no idea. So that was one of those instances of being true to the game. I just followed that all the way through and that's where I'm at today. I mean, stuff that I do today, I wasn't doing two years ago. I'm really um, build as this health conscious chef. Um, and I, you know, I thought I was doing that 15 years ago, stuff that I do now, you know, I, I teach people how to make amaranth and quinoa and farro taste good. First of all, they don't even know what that is. So <laughs> to teach them what it is and then make it taste good. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's how I've been true to the game. I just, you know, I've allowed, um, to be exposed to things and just, and just follow that passion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, uh, my next question here is, uh, put myself uh, on the hot seat okay. and with you here. You've seen some of the things I've put out there on the show and um, some other elements of my business. Right. What advice could you give me uh, to, help, to help my company throw or, uh, thrive or help Thrive America grow and so forth? Do you have any, any advice you could, you could offer me? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, people like us, we always have advice, whether you want it or not. That's right. That's <laughs> but the right. fact that you asked me, um, you know, and I just said, um, and that's one of the things we were talking about off, off camera. Like, yeah. You have to be your toughest critic. Mm -hmm. And you go and you, you just constantly sharpen your skills. And as you do that, you're constantly networking. And that's one of the things you do already. You, you, you constantly network. But the thing that I always tell people is you take yourself out of your comfort zone. So if you network in, in this environment right now, then you need to find a new environment to network in. You need to find somewhere new to network. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You like that? <laughs> I gotta get out there. That's true. I, I've realized that along the way. So I need to find some some new circles or yeah. some new some new uh, groups. That's maybe, how we grow. That'd be great. Um, my next question yeah. is a little bit maybe tougher for you to answer. Thinking about your industry. Yeah. If you could, if you had a crystal ball and you could invent something that would revolutionize your industry. Uh, what would that be, whether it's an invention, right. a technology, a new platform, a new way to communicate? What, what, what would you tell me? Um, that's a very good question. 
there's a concept that that I'm I'm currently working on right now, and I have a non-disclosure, so I can't go into the concept. But I can tell you that with the state of our country and our health situation, um, I would like to see, or one of the things that I'd work on creating would be easier ways to get better food, whether that's in a QSR, quick service restaurant, in a fast food restaurant, in the grocery store, whatever. Um, one of the things that I like to see in our school system, I do a lot of work with schools, I, I want to see better food. And when I say better food, I mean better to produce food, less or no chemicals, um, you know, the, the antibiotics and the steroids and all this other nonsense you know, the, the, again, cutting corners instead of using regular sugar. Like, reg, like sugar is that expensive. Sugar is really not that expensive. But we have a way of finding something that gives you the sweet taste that you want, but it's chemically, improved and it chemically produced, and now it's even cheaper than sugar. It's like, it, it, well, we're killing ourselves with this kind of stuff. So, so now you've got my interest. I know you're keeping something from us, yeah. but you're working in the background on something big. I have a feeling. Uh, Marvin, let's talk about some of the things you have. If somebody right. watches the show sure. and they want to, uh, they want to hire you for or have you come out and speak at their event. Right. You work with some schools. Maybe some schools will watch the show. What are, What are some ways that you like to be uh, for people to get in touch with you, uh, and and some books that you've written. Sure. Um, make it easy for us. Fair enough. Uh, direct contact is my cell phone three zero five six zero seven two five seven seven. I'm in the process right now of building a new website. My current website right now is marvinwoods.net. Um, the new site that goes live the 1st of August will be chefmarvinwoods.com. That site will be more interactive. Like right now, my site now, there's no blogging. There's none of that. On my new site, there's blogging. I work with a lot of dietitians. My dietitians will be blogging on there. There's a comment page where you can log in. There's a membership club. I mean, it's it's about to take it up to another level, man. That's about exciting. to have a lot of fun. Yeah, it is exciting. It yeah, is. yeah. And several of the books, people can just go. Sure. Uh, Amazon.com. Um, you can go Amazon.com. The first book is called New Low Country Cooking. The second book is Home Plate. And you can simply Google my name and, and it'll come up. You can also go to uh, Barnes & Noble or any major bookstore. If they don't have it on the shelf, they can get it in. Uh, Chef Offline has offered uh, our crew here to come to his house. <laughs> and uh, he's going to... Or gonna... at least the next restaurant. <laughs> fair enough. At least the next restaurant. Fair enough. Yes. Fair enough. And have a glass of water. <laughs> uh, well, just thanks so much for coming on the show and sharing your experience, your strength, and hope so that other business owners, entrepreneurs can thrive in this economy. Uh, any final thoughts uh, that you would like to share with us before we end the show? Well, it was my pleasure. Thanks for having me. And the, the last thing I would say is, um, no matter whether the economy is up or down, mm -hmm. the, the things that we talk about and the things that you talk about on a regular basis, they work. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the economy is, is in a little struggle, a little you know, string hole right now, but it's gonna bounce back. If you're not on top of your game, you're still not going to be in the top echelon. Yeah. Someone told me that when, when a recession goes down, I think we get back to basics. And, and we do. We, 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 get, we get lean, we get slim, and then yep. those of us that can, that can make it through with the creative strategies and marketing efforts right. will be better for it. Right. So uh, on behalf of Chef Marvin Woods, I'm Brent Brooks. Thank you so much for tuning in to Thrive America, and we'll see you next time on the show.